Welcome back, Coney is here. Today I'm flying from JFK Airport in New York to Logan Airport in Boston. I'm flying a Beechcraft King Air 350i. I've set a flight level of 3,000 feet. And let's go ahead and get started. Take off the parking brake. And give some thrust. Seems like we've got a pretty heavy crosswind or something going on. I can't even get the airplane to go straight. Okay, looks like we can take off now. Okay, landing gear up. KH-423, continue for east departure. I will contact you next when you leave my airspace. Flaps up. Kennedy Tower, KH-423, continue for east departure. All right, I'll turn it into our heading. JetWin 2254, clear to land, runway 4 left. Follow the aircraft on final. Wind tree 44. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and gauge autopilot. We'll stabilize things. Turn on the yaw damper. Clear to land, runway 4 left, JetLoo 2254. All right, and we want Altitude okay, and navigation. You are leaving my airspace frequency change approved. So now the plane's going to adjust Kennedy the course to achieve a perfect change. navigation. New York approach KH423 is type Beechcraft King Air 3 miles northeast of Kennedy 2400 feet. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. KH423 New York approach. Squawk 6325. Squawk 6325 KH423. Not getting a great frame rate. I put the NVIDIA frame rate indicator on the right side. I thought it was due to overclocking, so I've got my usual overclocking setup going. And I reduced some things from ultra to high in the graphic settings. I think it's due to all the detail. Let's go outside and take a look. First of all, let me reset this view. That's a tremendous amount of detail, so I think the frame rate is it rendering all that stuff. Oh, we're going too fast. Let me pull back on the throttle. Yeah, that is a lot of detail. This is a very populated area in New York. Oh, it's nice seeing all the water. Still going too fast. I'm going to pull back on the throttle just a bit. Okay, bring it down to about 30% maybe. I think we must have a headwind or that side wind is giving us kind of a boost in airspeed. Okay, well, I think that's probably good enough. Let me reset this view and pull up the drone. Set it to high speed. I can't seem to find a default setting for that. Maybe in an XML file somewhere. Okay, but what I'd like to do now is just start kind of exploring. I see is that a craft or a ship. I see something off in the distance. 
explore that. Could be somebody else flying. Kind of looks like that. And they probably won't be aware of my drone. EJA something airlines. Not sure what that would be. I think I'm approaching them. Let's just check on the airplane for a second. Alright, that all looks good. Alright, let's see if we can intercept this plane. Came from C KCAK, I'm not sure what airport that would be. Maybe Cleveland or something. It's so funny being able to find another flight and then go intercept it. I think in certain modes you can actually take over the flight. Yes, yeah, so I've got the, my airplane's forward flight and then I've got this plane's I guess it's making a turn. That's really interesting. Uh, the Doppler effects, I think we're getting like multiple s layers of Doppler effects, that's why it sounds so funny. Okay, that's a really interesting shot. Let's see if we can get it to fly by. Alright, well, uh, anyway, enough of that silliness. I think I'm going still in the right direction. Looks like it. Heading doesn't seem perfect, but I th think that's due to the wind. I'm going to go reset the drone and then start over from where we are. I'd be happy if the frame rate would at least stay above 30 most of the time. Of course, 60 would be nicer. It seemed like I was getting somewhere in the 50s before, but I think that was when I had all the graphic settings set to low by accident. That happens sometimes after an update. I don't really know why. It's a annoying. Okay, that frame rate's kind of insane. I'm not sure where I'm getting four frames a 
second. I'm gonna switch off the drone if I can. Things are becoming unresponsive. Something has happened. Okay, well the frame rate problem is cleared up. I have no idea what that was all about. But it was stuck at 4 frames a second for about half a minute. My clock speed is as good as it can be. I'm using Afterburner. I actually don't see it. There it is. Okay. So I've got my card pushing much higher on memory clock speed, and the core rate is up like plus 180. I uh, can't really tell anything from here. Maybe the four frames a second was it busy downloading content. I did recently turn on some settings to download high-resolution photogrammetry data and uh, other kinds of data. I hadn't seen that on the menu before. So that could certainly have something to do with it. There's no manual cache available to me for some reason, so I don't seem to be able to pre-cache things. Everything does look really nice. It looks like real water with real, you know, wind effects and whatnot on it. That's a nice shot. Seems to be handling that okay. Igor Sikorsky Memorial must be helicopter related. I'd like to check that out sometime. Okay, well, we're still on our way. Maybe I'll take the journey out again a bit. Still 100%. I'm going to disconnect from the plane. Make it a little easier to look around. Okay, so I wanted to go over and check this stuff out. I, just, I love all the set wind, I mean, uh, sun defects, lens flares, sunbeams, all that stuff. Bloom. Alright, frame rate is going down. I think, again, that's going to be all the detail. This may be that Sigorsky Memorial, I'm not sure. I don't see any markers.
can really see the wind effects on the water. Look at all the currents. That's amazing. It looks so realistic. I don't know if there's supposed to be water right here. But the reflections off the sky just make it look absolutely realistic. Alright, let's check on the plane. Everything looks good. Some kind of a bridge structure over here. Starting to get really low frame rates again. Probably all the water waves, maybe. Oh wow, look at all the boats. I think I have that turned up to at least 50%. Um, I don't know if those are boats or what. I guess photogrammetry data is what that is. Okay, cool. So uh, finally in 4K I'm actually getting photogrammetry data including logos and things. There's a Staples store, obviously. That hadn't been available to me before. Um, I couldn't find it in the menus at least, but I think it may be something they recently added. So that is cool. Things will start looking a little bit more recognizable. Um, the city downtown doesn't look right without logos on the buildings. Alright, so back on the plane. Well, back at the plane.
Alright, let's go back inside. It's gonna be kind of a long flight, I guess. Got a ways to go. But it seems like there's plenty to see along the way, and I expect the sun to go down at some point. Okay, there's that low frame rate again. Minus three. Yeah, I was afraid it was going to be cold, so I think I better turn on de-icing and pedo heat. Okay, so let's see what the warning tells us. Inert step on. Okay. I don't know what that means. I take out my trusty pilot computer and look that up. Inert step on. Is it on? Yep. Okay, inert step on. What does this say about that? Looking at Reddit. Climb and maintain 6,100 feet flex jet 358. Okay, so it has to do with it automatically closing a flap when it gets to a certain temperature to prevent ice from getting in and damaging the engines. And there's supposed to be a way to turn it off. And then the, um, I guess the de-icing would be effective or something. Because it turned on when I turned on the de-icing. Okay, let's see, what is it called again? It is... Well, it's called the ITT. Flap that prevents items from getting into the engine. So, I don't know where that is. Something that looks like it. Maybe inconsequential in the digital version of the plane, although it was a Microsoft Flight Simulator page. Oops, I don't want to do that. Uh, it was a Microsoft Flight Simulator page I was looking at. So, I'm trying to get rid of the yoke now. Sometimes that's a little hard to do. There we go. Okay. Brake, surface, stall warning, pedo. Okay, so I don't see anything like that ITT thing. I do see ITT here, and so I know it's related to the engine. That's environmental. Okay, maybe it's over here on the left. Okay, that's just fuel pump stuff. That's all fuses all the time. Okay, interesting. We're dropping an altitude. Why is that? Yeah, we're dropping in speed.
I just turned off the de-icing. I don't know if it makes a difference. So the panel instrument lights need to be a little brighter, I think. Yeah, that'll help. Okay, we're back to altitude. Um, I feel like maybe something about turning on the de-icing caused that. There was something in the article about changing the characteristics of the engine, so I'm not really sure. Instruments feel like they could use another boost in brightness. Uh, okay. Maybe that's brightness. Alright, well that looks better. Sun's not too far from going down. I don't know if it'll go down while we're in flight. We have another half an hour to go either way. Flight or the sun, not sure. There's the altitude varying pretty widely, wildly. I guess again it's just the weather conditions. It seems to be very bouncy, bumpy wind out there. Had to drop throttle because the speed suddenly started kicking up. It's kind of dropping again, I'm going to bring it back up to maybe halfway. I still don't know about the ITT flap. It's possible when I turned on the de-icing that that was engaged. It says on the article it takes 45 seconds or so to engage, so I'm guessing that it was something like that. It took some time and then it um, affected engine performance. All right, let's see, what temperature is it still? It's minus five, it's getting colder as we go north. Doesn't, and as it gets later, that seems to make sense. KH-423, contact Providence approach on 123.675. Contact 
Going to one two three decimal six seven five KH four two three. I just kind of love this view. Providence approach KH four two three. See if I can step back a little bit from it. Get a little more in, into view. Because okay, that's about close enough to do. And you actually have that little backup instrument, so it basically tells you everything you need to know, except heading. I do want to go outside and look around a little bit more. Let's try the drone again. Let me reset it. It's way off somewhere. Who knows where. There's that slow frame rate. One frame a second, four frames a second. Covering as it finishes loading data or loading memory or something. The reset drone position is not very reset. I'm not, not sure. I'm not sure exactly why that is. Maybe it has to do with the uh, plane being twisted to counter the crosswind. That's probably what it is. Alright, so it's a little on the slow side. Let me speed this up again. Looks like an airport or an airstrip or something up here. At least a beacon light. Oh yeah, that's a little airstrip. Surprised the light is so far away from the actual strip. Must be a Costco or well, I don't know. Actually, it looks like sports fields and things. Maybe it's a school or a recreational center. Freeway is really green. It looks like <laughs> it looks like there's supposed to be a dr freeway there, and they're just driving on green ground with no actual freeway, or maybe it's green snow. It's very strange. Things definitely look more realistic, realistic with the photogrammetry data added. It was looking very sterile uh, before. And the warning was that it could potentially be downloading gigabytes of data. Well, the game already does that, so I don't mind turning it on. Might have to worry about my Comcast bandwidth data limit. Interesting looking orange building. Maybe it's orange because of the late sun. Huh. Looks like it's some kind of a manufacturing plant or something. Oh, there's a plane. Maybe that's our plane. Let's go back and intercept us. I can tell if I turn the navigation lights off. Yep, that's me. The yellow and green dots are turning off. I should be able to turn that strobe off too. Let's see. Alright. And turn the beacon off. And that red dot, so there goes the beacon. There's the navigation. There's strobe.
Nice that those navigation lights are so visible far away. These kinds of shots are always kind of kind of interesting. Now, can I see the landing lights? I guess those are probably under the wing. Taxi lights, I don't see those either. Those are probably lighting up the tail. Yeah, so that's about it. As far as things I can turn on and off that you can see outside. Not too far away from the airport. As soon I will take over and start slowing things down. Super slow frame rate at the moment. It's a very interesting looking building, very detailed. Yeah, I think it, my computer's probably downloading lots and lots of data. I should display some kind of a bandwidth meter or something while the game is running. That would explain all this lag or just having to load it all into um, video memory, I guess. That shouldn't take very long. No, I think it's just all the detail. KH-426, contact Bradley approach on 119er, decimal zero. 119er, decimal zero, KH-423. Bradley approach KH-423, 3,000 feet. All right, let's see if we can get that frame rate back. Kind of does look like the sun may set while we're in flight. It's looking very, very low to the horizon. Not much to do during long flights except keep an eye on the plane, make sure everything's going smoothly. Looks like I've got our frame rate back to something decent. Okay, so at this point, I think I will take over from autopilot and start slowing the plane down. First of all, take off nav and altitude. So we're left with pitch. Take that off. All right. So, we're back in control of the plane. And at this point, I want to slow us down, so I'm going to pull back on the throttle. Let's bring it, bring it down to about 10. When you hit the bottom of the throttle, it automatically says the landing gear thing, but we don't need that quite yet. would like to slow down to mid 100s can't really easily see the sunset there we go hard to do that and fly at the same time. I 
Okay, we're slowing down a little bit, also dropping in altitude. We do need to do both, they're going to compete with each other. Okay, I think I will drop throttle just a little bit more. Maybe nose up just a little bit. Take up some of that speed in regaining altitude. Although we're not going to need it when we land. Nice to see the game is properly taking daylight savings into account because the sun should be setting at this time considering daylight savings. Slowing down a little bit less quickly than I'd like. I'm going to dethrottle just a bit more. Landing here. Landing here. Landing here. Landing here. I don't want to put the landing gear down yet. Landing here. Let me just try to get, get the throttle approach to the point where it doesn't give us that warning. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. KH-423 Boston approach. Cleared through the Bravo airspace. Through Bravo KH I do think it would be safe though to put the landing gear down now. It'll help with slowing us down a bit. I should really find out what the procedure is when you're supposed to put it down. I just do stuff as I learn and see what works. Okay, so we are slowing down at a pretty good rate. I'll put the flaps down when we get down to the white line on the ticker tape. It's very bumpy, but I think that'll be okay. Okay, I'm going to just nose up a tad more, see if I can get our speed down. Go ahead and put the flaps down part way. And push forward on the stick. Alright, so we'll watch the speed. I may need to bring up the thrust. Seems like it's okay so far. Go ahead and bring the flaps down all the way. Okay, so we have some altitude to burn off, so we can consume that for a while. We are dropping in speed, so let me nose down a bit. the altitude chime. We're 300 
below our set altitude of 3000. Okay, so we've dropped enough altitude for now. I'm not sure where the landing pattern is going to show up. Copilot's about to ask for landing clearance. I'm going to give it some more thrust. I see that we're dropping in speed. So we'll need to level off and give it some thrust. by now the co-pilot... Oh! Okay, that's not gonna work. Co-pilot should be asking for clearance. That's not what I want. Austin Tower KH-423 is one zero miles southwest with Echo to land. I think he was just busy. Cage 423 Boston Tower. Make straight in runway 4 right. Altimeter 29er decimal 87 wing 356 at 20. Fly straight in runway 4 right KH 423. Alright, let's go over there. back on the thrust a little bit, going a bit fast, it's not too bad. Okay, I don't see anybody there. Let's go ahead and turn, and I'm going to stick to the right side, try to keep visually centered on the runway. Nice straight in landing, that'll be nice. Okay, I can run off some of this speed by gaining back some altitude. American 2148 ready to go runway for left IFR to Washington. American 2148 cleared for takeoff runway for left. Okay. IFR in Washington, interesting. Must be foggy. Alright, go a little too far to the left. Let me get back centered. I'm going to pull back on throttle a little bit. I'm going to go all the way down on the throttle for now and then Austin adjust as needed. IFR on. Happy with our speed. Don't know what that beeping is. I hear that sometimes. But I haven't figured out what that is. Well, it stopped as soon as they cleared us to land. Maybe that was telling us we didn't have approach clearance or something yet. Um, I have heard that before, maybe when I'm landing, so that's my current Jet guess. Taxi into position and hold. Still a little bit too far to the right. Let me head over towards the center. I'm 
to give it some more thrust. I can see we're starting to drop altitude. Position and hold check blue two nine ray three. American two one four eight contact Boston departure on one three three decimal zero. One thing I'm noticing is that as I learn to fly, I'm going to have to co focus on nice, smooth movements as well because you don't see real pilots doing a lot of zigzagging and things. They just make a smooth, educated approach right in, and so that's something I'm going to focus on. That's where the hundreds of hours of practice really come in. Okay, I really do need to get towards the center here a little bit better and maybe nose up take up some of that speed for a moment okay I'm gonna drop throttle a bit more and then just watch it see if I need to make an adjustment but we're getting close. Okay, I'm going to drop it all the way down. So let's see how far we can get on forward momentum. Okay, I'm gonna give it some more thrust just as a safety precaution. Get us up over the hump here. JetBlue 293 contact Boston departure on 133.0. I can't really see where I'm going except for the Garmin and the brackets. Okay, I got a glimpse of the runway. Going to 133.0 JetBlue 293. Okay, so here's runway, and we're going to want to come in here and hover. And I don't want to nose up too much. See if, see if I can set these rear wheels down gently. Okay, those went down, front wheel down, brakes on, rudder engaged, flaps up, and let's get off the runway. I was having trouble, trouble with my rudder, rudder pedals again. They do need to be periodically cleaned, the contacts. So I might investigate. Yeah, this is not great. I might investigate a different brand, like a Logitech set or something. Um, cleaning the contacts did work this time. Another option would be to hack it and then just solder the wires rather than using a telephone style connector. So, yeah, I really can't see where I'm going. I think I need to turn on some more lights, maybe. Let's see. Okay, so that would be landing lights in the front. Okay. Well, anyway. I think I can kind of see where I'm going. Okay, I don't exactly know where I'm supposed to go, but I'm going to stop here, put on the parking brake, contact ground. Boston ground, KH-423 taxi to parking. KH-423 
423 taxi to general aviation parking by taxi way to call right Charlie cross runway 22 right Charlie Bravo Fox Drive Alpha. Taxi okay, good. So we've got uh, parking by a taxiway echo light indicator. Charlie, taxi ribbon. Two, two, right, Charlie Bravo Foxtrot Alpha KH four two three. Okay, good idea to look to the left. Don't see anything. Okay, here we go. So the landing was interesting. The wheels did set down pretty gently. Uh, I, I couldn't really, I couldn't really, um, Hold position okay, KH slowing down, uh, engage parking brake. I couldn't really predict what my hovering was going to be like, and I didn't want to pull up the nose too quickly, because I knew that we would drop speed and drop quickly, so I was trying to find a balance. I think I did. A little crazy getting the front wheels down, but they also went down gently, and I quickly got it back going forward. So it's just a matter of practice and doing all those things in the right order at the right time. It's a very interesting looking building. Let's see if I can get my controller working again. There we go. So, I wonder if this is one of the specially crafted airports. Looks kind of nice. Maybe while I'm waiting for ground clearance, I can um, reset the drone. There we go. That's a very interesting looking airport. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Okay, so... Question is... Do we get to go? Hold position, ground... Other traffic, okay. Huh. What other traffic? I think the game maybe just either forgot or I passed a point where I was supposed to stop. I'm just going to start going again. KH423, continue taxi. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I already KH423. did. Really? Again? Okay. Hold position KH four two three. Okay, where is this other traffic? I don't see any. It's probably based on airport data and things that they're not rendering. I'm just going to keep going forward. It's just a damn video game. <laughs> There's been plenty of times when it's put a truck right in my path and hasn't told me to stop, so 
I'm going to assume stopping is a mild suggestion. It looks very pretty at night with all the colors, sky colors and everything. Getting used to multi-dimensional breaking. Oh shit. Okay, well, there was somebody. Hope that wasn't a player. KH423, continue taxi. Well I kinda did. Roger KH423. Glad I have uh, no damage turned on. That would have been a mess. Pretty fast to be taxiing, and we slow this down. Even with the throttle all the way at the bottom, we get a lot of forward thrust from those blades. There's probably a propeller pitch setting I could change that would drop that, but I don't know how to do that. didn't really get to see the sunset either. Um, I guess I was busy dealing with the landing and slowing the plane down. That's always the trickiest part is the landing. Everything else is a piece of cake. Even the takeoff is a piece of cake. That's a good enough parking job for me. I have a knob on my Logitech panel for turning the engine on and off, but I don't actually know how to use it. I should learn how to use it. I switch it to off, but nothing happens. Um, it seems to be the equivalent of one of these. Kind of the equivalent of this. Yeah, so they're not set to on. If I rotate this, would they get set to on? No. Okay, so I guess it's not the same thing. Alright, we'll still use the keyboard. Control Shift E will shut the engines down. And that warning is parking brake. We don't need that beeping at us. Turn off the taxi and landing lights and pedo heat. And let's see, the gear is down, flaps are up. Alright, turn off the plane. That's it. Thank you so much for watching my flight from New York to Boston. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe if you did. And I will catch you in the next video.